All right, we're beginning now. Thank you. Kick it off, James. Uh, well, hey, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, so who am I and what is Vertcoin? Well, I'm an undergraduate researcher here at MIT at the Digital Currency Initiative. I'm the lead developer of Vertcoin, uh, which I've been for three years now. Uh, Vertcoin is a coin that launched in January 2014 and was forked from Litecoin's code base uh, without any ICO, airdrop, or pre-mine. Uh, so we're currently a non-profit. Uh, trying to perpetuate Vartcoin's adoption amongst the wider community. Our primary goal is to uh, use mining algorithm design and blockchain governance in order to prevent ASICs from being used on our network. Uh, we believe that distributing mining rewards and transaction fees to the vast majority of people is one of the most important goals of cryptocurrency. Uh, and it kind of sucks that Litecoin and Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies uh, make it so that's no longer really possible. It's cut off quite a large uh, adoption method, I think. Uh, and we've actually previously hard forked to Lyra 2RE, which is an algorithm we created from Scriptan uh, when ASICs for Scriptan were released in 2015. So we've set quite a decent precedent, which I think would deter any future ASIC from being created for Vertcoin. Um, so this talk is about Lightning and the work we've been doing on it. And one of the biggest problems we've found is people actually know very little about Lightning and how it works. Uh, so I, the biggest things people don't know about Lightning would be that it's interactive. Uh, people don't realize that you have to be online to send and receive payments. Uh, and if you or others don't defend your channel, i.e. pay attention to the blockchain, uh, see if old transaction uh, channel states have been broadcast, then you, you can lose money. And you know, when you make channels with people, you ultimately link your IP address to on-chain funds, which is kind of bad because if you have a bunch of bitcoins and suddenly I can figure out where you live, then you're liable for real world theft. So, you know, what are your options given these you know, challenges? So, you can just give all your money to Coinbase and have them do it for you. Uh, I, I really don't like this option. I think it kind of defeats the point. Uh, you can rent a VPS and put all your money in your Lightning Network node on that, which would work uh, and you have some control over it, but ultimately the hardware is owned by someone else, so you have very little scope for recompense if something goes wrong. Or, and, and this is my favorite and preferred option, you can be self-sufficient and run the software reliably for yourself. Uh, and unfortunately, there are quite a lot of requirements to be self-sufficient. You need reliable hardware that stays up all the time to allow you to receive funds and to defend your channel. Um, you really should run full nodes for every coin you want to transact with so that you're not trusting anyone uh, for accurate blockchain data. And ultimately, you know, opening channels with other nodes really shouldn't dox you and reveal who you are and where you live so that your private keys cannot be physically stolen. And, and you, know, you need to understand security best practices to ensure that your private keys, which ultimately will be always connected to the internet, don't get stolen. Uh, hardware wallets are fundamentally incompatible with Lightning because it would be unrealistic to accept expect someone when they want to receive money to go and connect their hardware wallet to their lightning device uh, and authorize a receiving payment. Uh, that won't work in practice. But you know, unfortunately, there's reality. And the reality is most users keep their coins in exchanges. Uh, so and they turn their computers off when they stop using them. I found this quite surprising. I don't think I've ever turned my computer off deliberately, but people do this. And the interactor Interactivity requirement for LN you know, precludes mobile devices from being LN nodes. Uh, people assume that they're going to have you know, lightning on their phone, but the reality is, is that's unlikely to happen without some kind of external device or hosting. And you know, most people are just never going to do this for themselves. Uh, we can't expect people to run complex software systems and understand security and networking and things like that. So we came up with this idea called Litbox. Uh, and it's essentially a small plug and pay hardware device, uh, likely ARM based, so a Raspberry Pi type thing, sold you know, at cost pretty much, uh, that just takes care of all of these complexities for you. Uh, and the device connects to your wireless router, uh, probably via ethernet, and stays online, uh, which allows you to have remote access to your funds uh, from any device. And you know, as part of this, we'll provide companion mobile and desktop thin clients to allow you to remote control it. So what's in the box? Ultimately, it's a series of Docker containers that provide uh, pruned full nodes for Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Vertcoin. Uh, it has Lit, which is the DCI's Lightning implementation, and a browser-based administration interface, so you compare new devices to your Litbox. 
Uh, it has Tor encapsulation so that you don't reveal your physical location whenever you connect to other nodes and open and close channels, and an SSH tunnel so that you can have authenticated remote control securely from any device that you might want to use when you're out and about. Uh, there are some really cool actual implications of this. Users can actually be their own bank. Uh, they can share their wallets across all their devices and keep their actual private keys in one place uh, without having to really interact with the network itself or configuration. Uh, and it provides a potentially really large increase in privacy for users and protection from user error. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have right now is all of the altcoins have overlapping address formats uh, especially when it comes to pay to script hash. This is a serious problem because people send different coins to addresses from the wrong coin. And then it comes down to exchanges to try and figure out what to do with that money and how to give it back to the user. So with this, we could ultimately deprecate on-chain addresses in favor of uh, LN1 prefixed BEC32 addresses and a payment protocol. So what this means is that you, you, know, you can send and receive any Bitcoin protocol-based coin using a single coin agnostic Lightning Network address per user, which is ultimately going to simplify things for a lot of people. It will be more like having an account number on your bank than having different addresses per user. Uh, the advantage of this is by using a payment protocol, we can abstract away from you know, on-chain addresses completely and just have these Lightning Network addresses. You know, this means that people will automatically be using a new address for every transaction that they make, which adds quite a lot of privacy properties. When coupled with Tor, I think it will be very hard to de-anonymize users on this network. Uh, how can we make this real? Most of the back end is actually already completed. Uh, the GitHub link is on there. You can check it out and spin it up for yourself. Um, the thin clients are still in the design phase. We're working on trying to get the UX really correct because until you actually start putting this stuff in the hands of users, you don't realize how little they actually understand about how it works and how much you have to abstract away from them because they're used to just using their credit card in a store and they don't have to really interact with any technology at all. And we're aiming for a minimum viable product by the end of the second quarter of this year. So yeah, if you have questions, you can email me uh, or contact me on the Twitter and there's our website. Uh, I'll also take questions now if anyone has any. I mean, internally, it's just going to be an ARM-based device. Uh, Raspberry Pi is actually kind of overkill because it has Bluetooth and audio and wireless and other things you don't need. And we'd really like to get the cost of devi the device under like $30 if we can, uh, because if it's too expensive, people simply won't buy it, and then you'll have poor adoption. Um, so right now, yes, we are just using a Raspberry Pi. But again, your average user is not going to put a Raspberry Pi in their house. They'll say that looks ugly. And Apple is particularly successful because they have good design. So I, I see no reason why this shouldn't be the same. Uh, well, you can't. Um, that's why we use prune nodes. So with prune nodes, you, you can fit it on you know, a 32 gig or 64 gig micro SD card. Uh, we're thinking about maybe as an extension providing uh, hard drive based devices, so you could run a full full node with, with history. Um, but I mean, that's a future thing, and it's not 100% necessary for security purposes. Uh, additionally, you can see how this could be easily extended to include some kind of point of sale terminal so that you can you know, use it in stores and things like that. Cool. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>